Um, I think last time we, uh, those who were here, we talked about uh, one piece dominating the other one. It was knight over over the bishop. Uh, tonight uh, we did, we haven't talked in the in the in the past two classes. We haven't talked about the rook. So we'll do the piece uh, domination one over the other one. But I thought that we needed some to, to add some some rook work. So it builds up on the other one. So if you weren't here the past two weeks, we talked about piece domination. We talked about bishop. We talked about pawn endings. We talked we talked about knight versus bishop. Uh, that kind of thing, uh, and uh, and tonight we talked a little bit about rook, which, in my opinion, is the most difficult piece to handle. So, so here we have this position. Uh, why not everyone take the, their, your time and try to try to assess this position? Uh, okay, white's a pawn up. Obviously, we have three against two. Uh, we have this passer, but this is a way more dangerous passer. But there are so many catches here to, to consider. So let's talk about that. So what do you think? What what is what is what makes uh, what's the, what's the most important advantage in white's position? White white is almost the although these two might the A and B actually mm -hmm. these two might be exchanged. If That's if true. we don't get to if we don't get to have an active plan here. Uh, Sorry, I think. Who is it? Say again? And after take? Yes, and why is that Why is that good? Yeah, well, we want to keep your your uh, your king over there because... But then you also give an F1. So we, let's go through that and see what's, ha what's going to happen. So F5, obviously, king takes G6. Not a good idea because of this, and again, the A and B pawn might exchange, and then you cannot win with a G or F pawn. The king is close enough on E8. This king is bad, but not that bad. Because it's central, uh, okay, it, it, it has been pinned, as I said, to the back rank, but it's central, so it has enough time to reach the B pawn or either the G pawn. So it's very important that we realize that having our king active, white's king activity is the most important thing. I have three rules if you want to write down for, for, for the rook games. First, active, uh, uh, advanced pawns, active, active king and uh, active, active rook is more important than material. Sometimes, uh, those who were in for the Rubinstein, Rubinstein games against Lasker, who, who were here for, the, for that game, yes, you were here. If you remember, Rubinstein sacked the pawn just to activate his king. He didn't drop the rook back to f1 to, to maintain the other pawn. So activity and having active pieces is more, is more important. So pass pawns, active king, active rook, and when you have a rook, there are two defensive ways with the rook. Side checks and, and attacking from behind. Ne Never only works on f few cases, or that's we. If we get a time, I would like to talk about. That's why I brought this book from 1930s by Rabinovich, because he explains it better than anybody else, in my opinion. From 1930s, uh, yeah, really, uh, I f feel for Rabinovich. He, he had a very, he lo he had four four daughters. They all died during the uh, Stalingrad, uh, the Leningrad's uh, siege. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, a great, great, uh, great book by Rabinovich, and uh, he explains when you attack from uh, this like front, like just, there, there's a pawn on the. Uh, most of the time, just if I want to explain that, let me put it on a new board. I'm not sure. Maybe White is already still winning, but if he's black to move, so we start giving checks. This is a defensive met method. I'm not letting you push your pawn. But if it was white to move, I would have pushed e5. Now if I put it again. If it was white to move, white would just simply push e5. And if check, go here. If I want to stop, now it doesn't work anymore. Now the king is too close. And the pawn will be promoted. So only in this case, attacking from front might work. Otherwise, you want to have a side checks or attacking from behind. So, going back to our position, 
uh, uh, here the rook is from behind so one way is that to create a shelter that's why we play f5 as you mentioned over there and then g5 because if g takes f5 now the king has an eye on this guy and this guy and given our rook is also active is pinned to this pawn we can hold b5 king c8 and basically this king our king doesn't cannot do much there there and now the rook cannot leave 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 the a file if i move my rook if i move my rook along the along the file this king comes to b6 So the rook is pinned, as is tied to, uh, to a6, the pawn is on b5, and I cannot get my rook, and you see how this attacking from behind works well. But if I put a pawn on g6 for black, I can just put my king on g7 and then promote, right? You would love to have a pawn on g7 and the pawn on h7. That's why we create that shelter. We play f5, take, and then play g5, because that covers the checks for us. Any questions so far? Okay, so far so good. But that's just beginning of the story. So f4, there, g7, f3. Now, how do you continue? Now, time for some excitement. Both pawns are about to be promoted. Okay. Rook takes a2, right? Ah, but don't think I'm, I'm such, an, such an easy guy. f2. Ooh. Now what next? King e6, I go rook g6 check and then I promote. Uh, rook g1. Rook one. There you go. And ah. the, and the truth hurts. <laughs> oh, he played rook g3, but the point is there and then rook f1. The truth hurts big time. <laughs> so rook g3, and now there should be more than one way to win this, but If, look at, okay, uh, maybe maybe B five B five is winning too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm worried about this check. Here, check, and if you go back, it's just a draw. If you go this way, I might go King F seven. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe you have winning chances. Maybe not because look here here, B six I take. B7, I go here, and that's a draw, I think. Because if you go there now, again, I have the same same maneuver. Mm -hmm. and just I come forward with my king. That's a draw. But rook f1, I want the pawn. He a little bit repeated a few moves. But now, if, if, I, if you follow me, I go now, now I, I'm closer to my pawn, so I, I, I'll be I'll be early enough. So if, if if I give a check, I think I can go here, and this is winning because if you give me a check, I go king to g4, and now you cannot stop me. And your rook is under attack, so I can promote. And if I go king to f7 here, I just grab this pawn, takes. And I think if I put my rook on b2, I, I think I should be winning. There is no king e7 with the push, so rook e8 is forced. And we play b6. And this is winning because I cannot play king e7. There's rook e1, rook e2 check. So rook there. Am I winning? No. It's a draw. 
So let's see. If check again. Ah, ah, but the rook is away, so I can go king d5. The rook is away. Ah, oh, now, now it's working because now I'm 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 threatening to push g8 check, and now it's working because now if it go there, okay, this is winning. We are in place because if check. This is very important. Cut off. cut off. We have to cut off. We have. We are. We are on time to, to cut off. And then the pawn. And also, you are not in time to get the rook in front because if I tried here, we, I'm early enough to push the pawn. If you go here, also doesn't work. Just push. King b6. And this this pawn is going to be promoted. Everybody knows the Lucena, the how to yeah, to do the bridge, right? Any questions about that? How to create a bridge? Okay, we're good. So if I want to use the notation here, if rook takes f2, rook takes g7, there, check and our king. Well, I think white played a bit, a bit risky because if he hadn't had after this move king c7, which shoulders this king, so our king is a strong, this king is a stop. And this pawn is going to be promoted, and the side check doesn't work because we always, with the side check, always we get on the other side of the pawn, and then we push the pawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, now we have the position we just had in the other analysis. Uh, rook e6 and b5, and I think that's game over. Any questions about this one? Okay, two simple ones for. The idea of well, once we play f5, how to, how things get into the get get into the way. This one, white to move. It's very important. These two, the, the next two I'm showing you, these are easy ones. But these are the patterns that they repeat a lot in the in the rook end game. And this is about when pieces get into each other's way. This is why to play. And win or draw. Uh, I wish win, but no, it's. To draw. I would like to see the kids if they can find this one. Why to play? Uh, this is why to move. Why to play? If I don't think he can win, it's, it's a draw. before because you are pushing it to the, the king the, the king runs into a unwanted pin and that's a draw this is a draw and this one okay this is not a rook end game but the same same idea you 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 cause uh, this is okay actually black to move you, st you stop you stop a you stop an idea pieces running into each other's way Okay, this is bishop bishop endgame, I understand, but the same idea. Bishop d3. Yes. <laughs> yes, sure. Yeah, that is the Paul of Shirov. Bishop H3, yes. But that one is very important. The the that one is very important because Bishop on H3 also wins the tempo because if I start coming with my king toward the pawn, here is is the same because King F2, I start pushing. And this bishop is still functioning. And when the king is, gets here, the king is within the square. The problem is that this is bishop, although under attack for a few moves, is still covering that. So you cannot both eliminate and get closer. 
that's very important. So the same thing with the with the with the Topolov Shirov game is that when you play bishop h3, that bishop is hitting on g2. So you have to lose a tempo taking the bishop. That important tempo becomes very very handy. Yes, this bishop e4 kills the, the so gets under each other's way. So we stop the e4 button. There you give a check, you push the king to the pin. How the piece is getting in, in, in each other's way. Okay, this is pieces getting, okay, not the idea, you, the, posi the positions we just looked at are not exactly representing the idea I wanted to, to uh, uh, the, the, the idea in this game, but somehow the pieces are in each other's way in black's position. Black is under, under tremendous attack because this rook is strong along, the, along this file, along this uh, rank. Our king is cut. This pawn is under attack, and this pawn is, is weak too. We are in trouble. How could we... How could black uh, get the pieces off of each other's way? It's very interesting. The idea in this game is very similar to the idea uh, I'm going to show you next game. Uh, Rubinstein played against a player named Matisson, and uh, okay, Matisson wasn't in, in uh, Rubinstein level, and he was only trying to make a draw in a better position. And what happened? He lost. But uh, Rubinstein found the idea <laughs> in this game. A player of the level of Washtajik couldn't find it with, with a super grandmaster 27 between 2730 and 2750. It's a very difficult position. What is on the way of our rook on c6? What's wrong? What? King f8 and then rook h7. What's that? e5. Ah, oh. very good job. This is a bad move. The right move is e. King f8, rook h7, and e5. The pawn should be get off the way of this rook. Now this rook has enough space to maneuver along the rank. And speaking of the ways to defend, what was one of the ways to have have activity along the along the rank? So e5. So if d take e5, rook there, and we are happy. We are very happy, right in time, right? And uh, if king there, okay, I will look at this. And if uh, rook d7, okay, rook d7 is more challenging, of course. Take take rook e6, and rook goes to e4. We have another activity. Oh. Is this here? It's not mine. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I don't have internet here on this laptop, so okay. So what happened in the game is that. Goes rook b6, king c3, rook a6. Now, uh, what should be the winning plan for white? So the point is here, king b4, yeah. Combining attack and defense. This rook wanted to come to a3. Now we want to play king b5, winning this pawn. But this and this, there's this key move. This is the key move now. The, the ensuing uh, pawn ending is losing. Only one tempo, only we had that pawn moment to get activity. One more time. In the rook end game, activity is the first thing you have to consider. Mm. And the end game, oh, and of course, Everybody is familiar with the uh, opposition. There and then King D6 and that's game over. Now let's see. I think that this is a bit easier. So I set up the position and let's see how um, Rubinstein handled. Well, the pr his problem was much less than Ostajek's. Not the same degree of complexity and not the same kind of opponent, but okay. Black has a weak pawn on d6. White has better pawn structure on the king side. 
but in few moves, Rukmishtan ends wise advantage and actually starts to play for a win. What should be Black's move in this position? And after that, what should be Black's plan to improve his position? Those who were here, we, last week we looked at Khan against uh, Capablanca. We were not done with it. We will look at it again here. It's Black to move. So how should Black continue first here to solve? It's not a big problem, D6. You can play King C7 and always defend your pawn, but it's, it's a sort of position you want to get after few moves, and then how you want to improve after that. What's that? Rook E5. Now, I don't have any worries. I just, I just need to keep my king close to my pawn, which is, which is after that is close to this, close to, is also in the center. So take the king D7, and here, so the king goes to D7, uh, to E6, the rook is free, and uh, what, what is what is furthermore to be done? E6, F5. Because if I if I manage to get rid of this pawn, then I have a majority, uh, 4 against 3. Of course, white will have a 3 against 2, but then I'll have an active plan. I, I, I'm so undermining this pawn. G4 something? Yes, white should have played G4 here, but white plays C4. So what do you think about this move? Is it a good move, a very bad move, a big mistake, or an average mistake, or just a, just a normal move? Why play c4? What's with c4? I don't know, five. Uh, that's right. What else? That's not good enough. <laughs> well, that's, that's, well, no, there's, that's, that's good. The thing is, these are all good. But I, there is something, there is something uh, after that. What happens after the open file? That's right. The, B, no, the, no, no. the, the point is b5. But what happens after b5 and b3 and the, the exchange? Because the pawn is still on c4. Yeah. Well, rook, rook b4. Yeah, right, right. But that, that pawn is still on c4 yeah. prevents yeah. d5. But what, why? Rook b4, the rook can't defend. I put a king on c3. Does c4 stop your plan g6 f5 or it doesn't? My point. That's my question. No, that's what you're not It doesn't stop that. Why it doesn't stop that? Because we want to do that, then eventually playing d5. But now c4, rook d5 is kind of seem, seems very solid. But there's something wrong with it. A6, a5 is correct. No, no, b, no. b5 was. Correct. We take c4 is going to happen. You're going to occupy the b file maybe at some point or maybe not. Uh -huh. What is the point of rook e8, rook e5? All right. Just one thing needs to be one thing need to be said. When you, once you play c4 and once we exchange e pawn, once we exchange these two pieces, these two pawns, the f6, once, and once we, we exchange the rooks, as you said, d5 creates a pass pawn for us, not just a majority. That's a huge difference. And that's why, that's a very important. Once we, we exchange the d6 pawn with a c4 pawn, then c pawn becomes a pass pawn. And in the pawn end game, pass pawns are extremely important. Not majority. Majority is not a pass pawn. It's a different thing. When the pawn is on c2, if you exchange, you, 4 against 3 is a majority. When you have a pawn on c4 and all the exchange is happening, when the rooks are off the board, d5 results into having a pass pawn, which is a very important thing. As, and as you can see, how uh, white goes down because of the pass pawn. So in the end game, do not bring, the, I would say it's, it's, like, it's like a spear and the, it's the tip of the spear. It's the head of the spear. Don't bring the head of a spear or the, your pawn chain just very close to your opponent because if the exchanges are happening at the result of the pawn exchanges, you might, your opponent might, le might be left with the, with the pass pawn. You do it unless you have advantage on the side. And White didn't have any advantage on that side. His advantage, as you mentioned, was on the king side with g4, h4, and trying to, although it should still be an equal one, but you could exert some pressure with g4, h4, h5, gaining some space, bring the king to f4, 
I don't know, maybe H6 happens, but then maybe go the other way, wait for black to see what's going to happen, then maybe F4, you know, that's where you have advantage. Do not play on your opponent's side. And that's a big mistake, that's why. So B5 right, but after that, it's a very important point is that after all the exchanges, black will be left with the, uh, with the past C pawn. That's very important, very subtle. So, uh, Rubinstein didn't have a problem to play. Can we see that actually played out there? Well, sorry, I'm going to show the game. Let's show the game. Sorry? Could you actually show us now that what you I, I'm going to show the game. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. I was not going to stop. I just want to. Un uh, th there's, there's so many ways to show it, but I, I thought that we would follow none other than Mr. Rubinstein himself. So, so here, oh, uh, King C2, King E6, uh, King C3, F5. So the first phase completed, right? We wanted to have the pawn on the 5. E takes a five, G takes a five. Okay, now we have we have we have four against three majority. Rook goes back to D two, B five, B three. Uh, okay, now we know. So we will have D five. We, we will have B takes C, B takes C, and D five. But is it the time to do it, or we have to do something else at this moment? The thing is that we also now have this open file over here, but can we use it? If you push F4, and so then you can play the rook over so you can't play G3? F4, then you have to think of G4. Because if you take, then h takes, and my pawns are kind of solid, your h7 pawn is kind of a little bit undermined. I'm not sure, uh, I'm not saying f4 is a decisive mistake or anything, but you want to be very careful because you're playing for advantage. So every move, you see that the advantage is gone, or you're a little bit adding to your pressure. The position is objectively equal. h5, yes. What's the, what's the ensuing idea? What's after that? What's after h5? Fix the G2 pawn and maybe rook G8, maybe H F4 and H4. Now you want to play H3, and if you take, so the idea is that I want I would like to have this. And H3, because if you take, then I go rook H8 and then I grab the pawn and put more pressure. And if H3, then then the vice majority is dead. So you're killing vice majority, then your D5 becomes much more strong. Exactly. H5, very good move. Let, let me. There are a number of moves here. I have to add some exclamation mark. Uh, rook e5. And uh, also g6, f5. And b5. That makes a lot of exclamation marks. OK, h5. Uh, so here, uh, really. Okay, now g3. White is trying to, to stop. Now it's time to calculate now. White's trying to, white's trying to stop uh, black's advancement, trying, which would fix white's king side. And as a result, we will have a safe majority on the queen side. And we could just slowly pushing. So white tries to create something. But, but what? <laughs> you have to figure, there's something wrong with g3 again. Same, similar to, to C4. As I told you, C4 brought the, the head of the pawn chain too, too close so that we could, you know, we could attack it. The same thing is happening here. And if I take, and if I play rookie to check, well, your idea was right, just why king d7, king f5? f4 is the best move. g takes f4 if it happens. Uh, in the game, black played. White play check, king there, and we will, we will look at this later on. But if g takes f4, rook f8, rook e to check, and I go king f5. And I, I'm trying now to actually win all these pawns. And if rook, rook e4, I'm kind of safe here. I don't see anything that would worry me, and I can go rook g8 now. White still should be able to keep it with active play. I, I believe so. 
But now, now there are things he has to handle. He has to, rook g2 is coming. If he goes back, take, king takes f4 is coming. So it's not going to be that easy. So that's why he played this. And now we have this position. Now black to move. This position. So well, obviously, rook, rook can go to g8, right? Attacking the pawn. Rook f4 check. King e6, rook e4 check. King d7, and uh, here white has to concede to grab this h pawn, give up these two pawns, and try to defend four against three. Instead, got to be greedy and play g4. Now, what can we do? H4. Ah, oh, yes, pass pawn. Yes, pass pawn. We don't have, we're not afraid of pawn instruct or anything. Pass pawn. Always. Rook end game, pass pawn. So h4, uh, white try to play a4, b takes c4, b takes c4. And now, actually not b takes c4, actually, b takes a4. This is even more accurate because b takes c4, there could be some king takes c4. So you try to avoid that as well. Now here, and now, and now what should we do? Ooh, no. That, now, now I'm afraid a little bit to, to, to talk. <laughs> Some giant is here, so I'm a little bit try to <laughs> be careful with my content. Yeah. <laughs> Rook F8. Yes, yes. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I think here we could actually include this earlier and then play h4. Because if take, I can take check. And after king goes back here, we can play rook h3. And we can play four against three. But uh, my long ago and a long time ago analysis tells me that this is the best practical way to make a draw this i'm not sure if it can hold so h4 a4 which is another bad another bad move in this position it's a waste of time we have to think you have to think of doing something about this pawn either bringing the king although we don't want to really bring this king over here because it, it stops this king this rook from going e1 and going to h1 in the meantime I don't know, we have to do something about this pawn, but a4 is just a waste of time. So b take a4, b takes a4. Oh, and, and now uh, black to move. H3, H3 I can play a4. Uh, then you have a 3 against 2 with good winning chances, but I think after if h3 f4 rook takes f4 rook takes h3 rook takes g and i might go a can i go a5 rook g1 is a little bit dangerous but no I, I think i can go a5 and now i am threatening to play rook h7 i'm going a7 and i have i think too much activity and uh, one pawn is not enough material to win this but again what was our rules think about our three rules in the rook end game you don't want to give, give up that pawn that easily. Rook f4, interesting. Rook f4 is an interesting move. I can go, sorry? Rook h8, I go rook e2, I'll be passive. Rook h8, interesting, I'll be passive, but then I'll have f4 and g4, and it's not that easy for your king to come close to the h pawn. h3 if we play four rook h8 i go rook to e1 and h2 i go rook h1 your king again cannot get close that easily although with a little bit of adventure i check i was playing with with stockfish is still winning but it's a little bit adventurous what about rook e8 can exchange rooks 
and then and if I play rook king to d2, if I play here and king to d2, and then what? Um, and if I play oh h h3, I can go rook to b3, I think, and h2, then I can go rook b1, and then and then d5. There you go. Remember I said why c4 was a bad move? Because you bring the, you bring the head of the spear, the, the, yeah. the pawn chain, in front. So, and now, after d5, as I told you earlier, we have a pass pawn, not just a majority. And that's a huge difference. So exactly, rook takes rook, king takes here, and then d5. And black resigned. White resigned, sorry. So how many rules we created? We, have, we created too many. I think I broke Ben Feingold's record on that, making, <laughs> making rules. So, on the side that we are weaker, we will not push pawns because then we can give the chance to, uh, to your opponent for the counter. And uh, as you can see, if the, this pawn was on C2, still I don't think it mattered here, but if this pawn was on C2, uh, black should have, uh, white should have had a chance to hold. Uh, and the well, the other one was that the pawn that the uh, the pass pawn you want to have a pass pawn so h4 we try to have a pass pawn the other one was activity we 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 try to in, in the in the opening in the in the opening uh, scenario we exchange and we activated our king that's what white had to do instead white played c4 w wasted a very very precious time and then we centralize our king, and then we play the five. It was because we had an act active king. Because king is actively defending this pawn, letting this rook maneuver along the, uh, uh, this rank. And you know, if we, we have to occupy the g-file, and sometimes we have to occupy the b-file, which wasn't the case in this game. So actually, the final, uh, just for, oh, sorry, here is the final position. After take and uh, I can go h3 there and c4 and as you can see it's quite wide open th that king cannot handle both and uh, this pawn is a temple behind so if because another important thing is that if g5 uh, our king is within the reach of this pawn so I can just take on c4. It's one of the many ways to win. And after g6, I just go king e7. Yeah. And again, the pawns are too further away. So this uh, example of two far past pawns reminds me of this famous endgame by Nimsovich. How many have, have seen this position before? So is rook d2 a good move or not a good move? It's a draw. How come? And take and then King E4. And I play B6, G3, B7, G2. Let me show it on the board. We'll look at that too. And uh, and I think uh, we will have some winning chances after this check. Yeah. Just after king f3, don't play king d3 because after, despite this check, there's this nasty check on e3 <laughs> that <laughs> that ruins the day. But I'm not sure. Maybe it's 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 a, it's, it's a, at least a draw. It's at least a draw. But. Uh, it's maybe just a draw. So king e4, so king d5. So what about this one? Interesting. So let's say I play b6. You have to go king c6, right? And then I go f5, and I think we promote at the same time. And I don't think you have any specific mate threat. Oh. 
and I don't think that pawn and queen are going to mate me. Are they going to mate me? I don't think so. But think about just what we just looked at in the previous game, the final, final position. Black obviously will create two farther pass pawns. The, the, actually, the, the, uh, the Ruski has this rule of five and seven. That's too complicated for me, so I just start counting. So after uh, the, he was counting the number of squares in front and, and the, number, uh, the number of files apart, the, the pawns are, and the number of squares in front of them to, to promote. And he said if the number is bigger than something, seven or five, it's winning, or if it's not, if the king can going to go both row, both way and capture both pawns. So after here, we know that after f4, it's going to be two scores in between, two two files in between, and then there are three here. There are three squares here, and then three here. That's quite a number of num of of squares. So it probably should be winning. The problem is that with with the problem is with white's pawn being active. Question. What's that? A five. Oh no, I don't play b six. I play when you play king d five. King d six. There was king d three. King d five. I go a five. And now I want a six because in my immediate threat is a six. And actually, I'm going to promote the pawn with a check on a eight. So that would cost you another tempo. Then I no. Then I play b6, b6, and then you go king c6, and I go king d3. F4, I just grab on d4, and then yeah. actually that's that's it. No, that's not winning because after f3, king I have to go back king d3. Let me show you. So if I go here, you take king takes on d2. If you go king d5, um, I go a5. So king c5, you go, I go, can I should go a6, okay, b6, can I, does it matter? I, I, th I thought it should be winning, but king c6, mm -hmm. king d3, f4, can I take, because if I take, it's going to be a draw. Uh, king c3. I think I should concede to a draw here. It doesn't matter. But maybe you can look for more. This one is a draw. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> F4, we include that. It's a very important tempo. Because this pawn on F4 is not fast enough. It's not, a, it's not advanced compared to our pawn on G4. And after G takes F4, we go king d6. Now, remember in the very first one when I was showing you in, in Hushimbeth game, the, the, very, the very first one, when I said the king was on e8, isn't a bad piece that, that much because it was covering both the pawn on b4 and g4, g4 if you remember. it was. So this king now, uh, first of all, this pawn is way too far. So if I go a5, we go g3, a6, and we go king c7, and this pawn is going to be promoted. And if I try to run like both both of these pawns D and G and then uh, five G three F six G two still too late. So another choice could be B six King G three. I think that's, that's way too many. And if King to E two, I'm trying to stop that and do three check. The king on d6, and similar to the previous, and, and remember uh, the first one I said the king on e8 co covers both b and g pawn. So this this has this controls this pawn, these two guys, and this pawn as well. This is a key square. Any questions about this one? 
Okay. I think that was that was what I had for today. Thank you. <laughs>